One of my most recent purchases is this Backman V3, I think it is. It might be a V1. I'm not quite sure of the difference. Obviously, it's in the LNER lined green, but it was probably painted this way in about 1948. So it's got British Railways on the tank, and uh, it's got the extended bunker at the back for more coal. And it's one of the older models with the split chassis. It came in one of these boxes with the sort of window where you look inside, you can see the um, locomotive. And I'm not even sure if it had been run because I found the detailing pack, which is just uh, some brake rodding and two vacuum pipes, still unopened in the box. So I'm going to fit those at some stage, but I haven't done it just yet. Now, the, this model was actually designed in the early 90s, so it's getting on a bit now, now, but at the time it was first built, it was, well, pretty setting the standard for the level of detail you could possibly expect in a locomotive. It's got all separately fitted handrails, it's got front uh, lamp irons. I'm just looking at the back, the back ones are just moulded, but it's got much higher level of detail than you would have seen in most models in the 1990s and it really did impress. Now I bought one of these back in those days uh, in BR Black and it ran beautifully for quite a long time and then a problem occurred with the chassis and as is common with the split chassis uh, one of the axles breaks and after that the locomotive never ran quite so smoothly it was a bit jerky it was okay, but not uh, brilliant. So when you buy the second hand, you do have to make sure that the model you get is a smooth runner. If there's something wrong with it, then of course you can always return it, um, even if it's second hand. If you return something within 14 days, you've bought it on online, that's fine. You, you are covered legally to do that. Even if a seller on eBay says no returns, that's irrelevant. Um, if you buy anything online, I believe it's a 14 day uh, return policy they have, um, just a legal requirement basically. Let's see it pulling some coaches. I think the lined green livery on the Backman V3 is so beautiful that the only thing that I've got that could really do it justice is some Hornby teaks. They're actually the Thompson suburban teaks but they look pretty beautiful behind the lined green, I think you'll agree. So it made a smooth and quiet start, but on this part of the track here, where my track is directly ballasted onto a chipboard, it's a bit noisier. But that noise is just rails on track. On the outer track, I have a Hornby B17 footballer. I think it's Manchester United. Um, now, this is actually one of the old Margate models. Again, like the Backman V3, dating back to the uh, 1990s, I'd say, early 1990s. And uh, this model was a real bargain off eBay because someone had gone to an awful lot of trouble of super detailing the model by adding things like cab doors, um, lots of extra handrails where the original model just had moulded handrails. The guide also put uh, cylinder drain cocks on it but I had to remove those because they fouled the bogey wheels as it went around corners. But the whole thing has been weathered, the chassis in particular has been nicely weathered and the actual body is a much darker green than the Hornby original. In fact, it, it's been quite heavily weathered and it's just got a nice metallic sheen to it. It's not perfect, but uh, this one with postage costs less than £30. And the guy had also fitted 
uh, a screw link coupling to the front and so on and extra pickups as well to the uh, driving wheels it's a tender driven loco compared to the Backman v, v, V1 and V3 at the time it was created it was much more basic because it only actually picked up from one side of the loco and the other side of the tender for the tender drive um, but with the extra pickups it works pretty well now it's not as smooth as the most recent Hornby models but I'll see if I can get it going uh, let's see how it runs it's uh, operating on a gauge master feedback controller it's also a pretty good hauler as you'll see as the, as the train comes by I have to say that considering the age of the model and the fairly basic design that Hornby tend to drive locos were, especially the ones made in Margate, uh, it's a really good runner and I'm delighted with it. And all for less than £30. Uh, and with the super detailing that the previous owner did to it, making it, uh, uh, well, it's not as beautiful as the latest Hornby B17s, but in terms of realism and accuracy, the dirty look to the body uh, actually does suit the sort of 1950s era that I model, so I can't really complain about that. The third and final locomotive in today's video is um, a kit-built LNER F2 from the Great Central Railway. It's in the LNER lined black livery, although you can probably not make out most of the lining. It's a white metal kit, I don't know who built it, I don't know who made the original model, maybe someone like Newcast, I'm not sure. But it's pretty well made, it cost about £55 with postage, and it's a reasonable runner, a bit noisier than the other two, um, but I'm pretty pleased overall and I may be able to tinker with it a bit to improve the running. Let's, let's get it going. Oh, and it stalled. Just shows that it's not perfect. I'm not trying to pretend it is. But it is a unique model. When I say it's a unique model, I mean it's not available to run, ready to run. And I've never seen a model before, uh, either at an exhibition or for sale. So I'm pretty pleased about that. Now it's hauling a couple of Ian Kirk Gresley coaches that featured in a previous video and I thought they suited it rather well. Again, they're not perfect either and they're of a similar era probably to the kit. So there it is, the uh, LNR F2. Um, I'm pretty pleased with it overall. There are a few things I need to do to it, like add a rear coupling, because, uh, well, that's why it's running bunker first at the moment. Um, 
and I could add extra pickups to it. It only picks up from the four driving wheels, uh, which obviously is a bit unreliable, relying on just the four pickups. But um, I'm quite fortunate. My main lines are all Pico Electrofrog points. So with four wheel pickup, you normally cope okay with points, although more than four is obviously better. So I could add some extra pickups to the front or rear pony truck. Just got to be careful there's not too much friction because those two trucks are quite light and therefore the wheels, though they're running smoothly at the moment, a bit of friction might stop them. Um, apart from that, I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, the finish isn't perfect. I do need to touch up the paint a bit. But overall, for a 50-odd pound kit-built model, it's, I consider, to be a bargain. Um, so, I hope you've enjoyed looking at my three recent purchases. Um, as I've said in the past, there are lots of bargains out there still if you don't want the latest and best. My Backman V1 or V3 is not the latest and best. Um, uh, you know, the split chassis design is, it can be temperamental, I would say. Um, but the Hornby uh, B17, the tried and tested tender drive, is very reliable and can be easily serviced and repaired. Uh, so, overall, I've got three locomotives that I hope will last me a good long time and will perform great service on the layout. Anyway, that's all for now. Enjoy your model railways and see you again soon. Bye.